My husband and I are anchored off the shores of Isla Mujeres near Cancun, Mexico, trying to get projects done before we can head either north or south. One mission that I could undertake while Robbie was gone was to stencil graffiti our boat just like Banksy does. I used reference photos of oceanic white tip sharks earlier and then transferred the design from my notebook onto cardboard. The bigger the cardboard pieces, the better. However, these cereal boxes were the largest pieces I could collect at the time. To cut out the shark and the lettering, at first I thought it would be a great idea to recycle safety razors, because we don't exactly have those fancy art supplies like X-Acto knives on board. Ow. This is not an easy thing to draw with, cutting up my hand because of it. But then quickly realized that even a blunt box cutter would be better than that. Okay, I kind of gave up with the with the razor blade. It's kind of hard to make the angles with the this blade. It doesn't cut as nicely as the razor blade, but it's working. It's supposed to be like a little bit like jagged, like shark teeth, shark logic, shark aesthetic. We don't respect the cabin sole here aboard SV and Esperado because the floor is already a mess. However, a cutting mat or sacrificial piece of wood is recommended for a project like this. As always, I cut away from my own hands and body. Also, I cut lightly and cut multiple times over instead of trying to cut hard and deep, which could result in slipping and cutting myself badly. I cleaned the area and busted out some old spray paint cans. I wanted at least three layers of paint and had to wait a minute or two in between each layer to stop the paint from dripping down. Now people can identify our boat again. We're in the process of re-registering the boat, so you'll have to stay tuned for the labeling of our home port later. Robbie traveled to the Sea of Cortez just in time for Hurricane Hillary to flood the Baja Peninsula. And meanwhile, I tried to get to the bottom of the issue with our kayak dinghy constantly filling up with water. Although it still floats, there are cracks in the bottom that allow it to fill up slowly and make it slow and heavy in the water. We have to flip it over and drain it out every time we go to shore. These cracks are almost invisible, but they are definitely there. This is not the first time patching up these cracks with 5200 sealant, nor will it be the last time. Actually, the truth is, this may be the last time I do it because these repairs never last and the water doesn't stay out for more than several days. Several days later, the heavy rains arrived. This was the beginning of what would eventually become Hurricane Idalia. Not really sure how I'm gonna get in it, because as soon as I get in it, it'll sink. Robbie finally returned to the boat to be with Choco and me in time for the arrival of all the bad weather. And around the globe, it was a busy time for tropical swirls in the ocean. We debated whether or not we would enter into the more protected lagoon as cycloidal clouds gathered in around us. While our anchor was dug pretty deep into a nice sandy patch that got us through several blows over the last several weeks, someone had come and anchored very close to us and also higher than normal winds for an extended period of time, 
would make it impossible for us to row to shore in this bay. <laughs> So the next morning, with a struggle, Robbie pulled up the extremely well-set anchor that lay on the bottom almost directly under our neighbor's boat. We turned away from the beautiful rainbow, while in the eye of a forming hurricane, we made our way into the more protected lagoon. We circled the area several times, like our doggo does before choosing a spot to lay down comfortably. Just making a circle to see if we have enough water. And I think we do. And nestled up as close to the mangroves as we could get. I just went down and put her in reverse. Ravi's gone up, he's going to release the anchor in. And we're just gonna slip nicely into this little corner. Mangrove forward, mangrove on our side, and empty docks. I don't know, I think there's charter boats that come to them eventually. This was just about as bad as the weather got, as the soon-to-be Idalia hung over our heads until she eventually took off towards Cuba and Florida. Here we see boat neighbors helping out boat neighbors reset anchors as we expected a little more wind going into the next day. We know the strong wind is not coming from there. Well, there, so we can go actually pass us to one of the posts. But I worry if at that door I'm still some boats gonna pass. Press the button, the hatch is closed. Neat. <laughs> Press the button, neat. It can open. Press the button, neat. No, he's attached to it with the rope that he just put the anchor. I don't know why he jumps in when he puts the anchor. I, I, I haven't figured that out. But that night ended up being very quiet. Until the next day, we returned to the outer anchorage, the same day that Idalia was hitting the Florida coastline. We thought the we thought the storm was over, but it's not. Whatever this tail end is. Can we turn on the engine? El anzuelo tiene como un poquito de cable de como 5 o 7 pulgadas de, de cable. We 
anchored a little close to Ventus. <laughs> this is this has been anchoring here, yes. This is life in these little hoodies.